I want to teach you the basics of using the Sai, one of the most commonly seen weapons of old school karate or kobudo as we call it today. Because as you know, originally the weapon arts and the empty handed arts went hand in hand, especially in Okinawa. But today a lot of us like to separate them. But being a karate nerd, I think you should know at least how to use the basic weapons. And today I want to teach you the basics of using the Sai. Let's have a quick look at the three basic grips, the basic ways of holding the Sai. First, we have Hon Te. Mochi. Mochi means grip. Honte means the natural grip. This grip right here. So if you gave this to some random guy on the street, this is probably how they would be holding it, right? But of course, an important point is to have your thumb right there for stability and support. And you need it there when you want to flip it to the next grip, which is the reverse grip. Gyaku te mochi. You go thumb, Release four fingers, let it spin around, and then you grab it again, and you end up in the reverse grip. This right here, which is what you use mainly for close distance techniques, blocking, punching, hooking. Because the first one is longer, right? You have more reach, okay? Stabbing and all that kind of nasty stuff. So the second grip, which I just showed you was Gyaku Te, reverse hand grip. Mochi. Right. Every weapon has three types of grips. The same terms for all of them. The last one is the special grip, the tokushu mochi. And it looks like this with the side. So you hold it in kind of the end by the tip, and then you're using these parts right here to hook, to block, to, to slice and dice, right? And we call that the special grip. Tokushu. Mochi. Shu means hand, te. It's the alternative pronunciation of the kanji, the Japanese sign for hand, all right? So, tokushu mochi. Anyway, enough with the terminology. I want you to start in the gyaku te mochi, the reverse hand grip. This way, right? This is the yoi position, the ready position. Just like we do in karate before we start any moves, we're prepared, yoi. Now from here, first of all, you should be able to flip the side. If you don't know how to flip them, that should be your first practice, all right? I quickly showed you before, right? Thumb, release, flip, and then when you go back, you do the same thing, but you reverse the order here, all right? Quick lesson. Now let's start. Kihon, the basics. From here, I step back with my left leg if I want to do it on my right side. You can do it on your left or your right side. I'm gonna start with the right side. So, I drop, step back, cat stance. As I flip them out, and I do technique number one, a high cross block. Imagine somebody striking me with a staff. This is one of the most common blocks with the side. So again, from yoi, I sink back, drop, step, flip them out, and do a cross block. Technique number one. From here, my left hand sweeps to the side as my right hand attacks from above and I sink down and slide forward into a sumo stance, right? We call this a fudo dachi because my front foot points uh, to the opponent but my back foot points away, all right? So it's not exactly a shiko dachi or a kiba dachi, but a, a, a combination of them both. A typical stance when you're using the weapons, any weapon. We call it a fudo dachi, but I'm sure, I'm sure there are many different terms for it, all right? So here, this position. Back hand in front of the navel, belly button. Front hand smashes the head, all right? One more time. Itch. Knee. Two techniques. Now, technique number three. I flip in my back hand. I go parallel with the feet. I slide to the inside 
and I do a low block with the front hand and I lift my leg at the same time to avoid getting hit. This is a low block. But remember, this hand now is on the hip. So I fold it in like this and I put it by the hip. There are two basic ways of having your sigh at the hip. This is the most common. But can you see a problem with this right here? You might hurt yourself if your hikite looks like this all the time, right? So the hikite that we use in my style of kubudo and other styles is this. Can you see the difference here or here? I recommend this one for safety, but this is also very common, okay? But now we do this. So again, we're now at three techniques. One, two, three, okay? After this, we now start attacking. We did a block, attack, block, and now we do another attack. I step down, I cover myself with the back hand, and my attacking arm goes under, and I go bam, like this, from the inside out, and I pull the hikite, the withdrawing hand, back to the hip. Then, circle around, and come from above inside, bam. And third one, I circle from the inside, drop my weight back and bam, straight down. So I do like a combination of three quick attacks in the natural grip. Again, after the low block. One, two, three, all right? So you put those together into a combination. Again, from the beginning. H, ni, san, shi, go, duk. Now we flip it in and we do some more karate style blocks. I'm sure you'll recognize these moves. Low block, like this. High block, like this. Inside block, like this. A common mistake when people do blocks with the side is that they tend to have it in a straight line like that. And then they do like a regular karate block. But look now, there is no side protecting my arm. Can you see that? It's just my meat and flesh and bones, right? You need to have it like this. Can you see that? So the side should not go in a straight line if you're using it to block. Inside here, like that. Not like this because then it's your arm blocking. Same with the high block. You want the side protecting, not the arm. That's just stupid, all right? So make sure that the side has a slight angle when compared to your forearm. All right, again, from the beginning. One, two, three, and four, five, six. Flip it in. Block, seven, eight. Use your hips too, nine. And now from here, I do a gyakuzuki, a reverse punch. Just a regular straight punch. Then we do the same. But in the natural grip, I pull it back, prepare, and stab, like this. I want your elbow to point down and your thumb to point up. This is a, an anatomically stable position. And then from here, we finish. I flip it in, I go back, and yame, finish. And that is the whole kihon or basic technique sequence. Now let me show it to you on the other side. Left side. So I step back with the right leg. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pull back, eleven. Step back, zanshin, and yame. Finish. And you can replay this over and over again until you get it. 
I'm not gonna be showing it to you a hundred times because technology takes care of that. Just rewind it. And now, let me show you how to finish. After you do the yame part, you want to bow, right? You always start and end with bowing. And the way you bow with the sai is you put them together like this. Common ways, either you hold them at, at the hip or down here by the leg. And then you simply bow. Again, when you start, you do the same thing. Just insert your thumb and then you start, right? Either you hold them like this, by your leg or by your hip, or the way I do it, two fingers on the one on the bottom, three fingers on the one on the top. And so ideally, you should not be hearing any noise, no noise, when you bow, all right? Your sigh should stay silent. I start here. And the first attack is a high strike towards my head. Go ahead. Bam. What I do, of course, is the first move. I sink back and I block, like so. But this is a lot of power, right? I can't be expected to receive all of this force with just my hands. So I redirect it and go into the second move, which was the attack, right? I control the staff and I smack the head. First technique, second technique. But of course, she blocks my counterattack. Again. One, two. Exactly. She just lifts and blocks with the center of her bow, which leads her to the third technique because now I'm open down here. So she does a thrust towards my groin. I have to move to the side, protect my groin with my leg, and block that one. And that is the next move, right? One, two, three. After that, I'm very close to her. And if you have a long weapon like a bow, you want to make space, right? To use the full potential of your weapon. So now she steps back. One more time, from the beginning. One, two, three. She steps back and then she comes with another high attack. Now comes my next move. I block to the side. One, and then my next attack here goes for the wrist. Bam, two. She takes a step back and blocks that one. I follow her. So I go one, two, three. These three moves now. And the third one, she blocks as well, again, with the center part of her bow. One more time. So I'm kind of chasing her at that point. From the beginning. One, two, three. She backs up, and I go one block, wrist, two, three. And now she needs to create more space because I want to close the gap since I have the short weapon, but she wants to open the gap because she has a long weapon. So she steps back and does a low thrust, now with the other end. Kind of like when you're using a pool stick, okay? Let's come over here so you don't ruin the mirrors. So she goes, bam! Now I go low block here. This position, right? The reverse grip. She continues, because I'm open here, with a high attack. And I move to the side, because you don't want to have all of the force right here. Instead, try blocking the arm if you can, because you want to close the distance, right? So that's my low block and my high block. Now my next block is the inside block. She creates space and turns and comes from that side. Bam, right? So I do the inside block. But not out here, because you don't want to receive all of that power just with your arm. So try to again go closer and block in the center. Here. Let's do all of that again. Solo. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten moves, right? Number one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, 
Eight, she spins around, block the center, and now my next move is the reverse punch and then the reverse thrust. And then it's finished, right? So let's come closer to the camera. After this inside block here, I do my reverse punch in this opening here. But she jams my elbow with the front part of her ball. I grab the center with my, these three fingers to release my grip and then I threaten her for the last move. That is my thrust, this. So you don't stab, just threaten. She gives up, we back off into Zanshin and then finish and that's the whole thing, right? One more time, slowly. Notice how we use our circular footwork to find the correct angles all the time to make our techniques work. In the beginning, you might find that it's very static, that you stand a lot on the same spot, but as you progress, try to incorporate more of this circular footwork that you see us using. Now let's do it from the other side. One, two, three, Attack comes, block, wrist, head. She steps back to do a low thrust, block. Block the arm, block the center of the ball. Attack, she jams it, I release it, and threaten. And then step back, Zanshin, and finish, and back. Now you have a very quick lesson of the fundamentals, the basics, how to flip it, how to hold it, how to bow with it, how to start and finish, and then how to do the basic techniques with the side. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.